Hey guys, Joshua Peterson with Peterson Electric here today in Lafayette, Colorado. We are working for a customer and uh, he's taking an old historic home here, which uh, the GC Keith is getting all that ready to go and John's doing all the footers here. Um, basically, what I want to talk to you today about was the UFER grounding and that's spelled U-F-E-R. Um, so in a nutshell, it's a 210.52. We're in the 2011 code on this because this permit was pulled last year and they have not adopted the 14 well they have adopted it but they're not implementing it because this permit was already pre-existing but anyway so you're going to look underneath uh grounding and bonding under 210.52 and it'll state it let me just find it here i thought i had it open Okay, concrete and clay encased electrode. So if you're in the 2011 code, it's page 112. It'll talk about um, all of the requirements, and I'll just go over that real simple for you. So basically, this is going to be 5 8 inch rebar. It's pre-treated for cement. We had to do 20 foot of number four stripped copper. You could get solid if you wanted to. So that's going to start in that corner there. And that's going to take this ground wire, which we only did one right there. All this is going to be in the footer. The code specifies either footer or stem wall. And this is going to tie in three spots just to kind of divide it. Okay. Then we're just going to wrap this piece of rebar that we pushed in. So when Keith and them put the stem wall in, this will be in the stem wall. And this will poke into the crawl space. We'll drill the header and push it back out and go up into the panel. Now this right here is just implemented because he wants to feed a 2 inch PVC to the garage later with 100 amps. So we may put a number 2 watt copper and run that over. Um, so we just put this in right now at 2 foot deep, assuming that this, this may not be any lower or may build up. The minimum requirement is 2 foot. And the power company is going to come in at 3 foot, which is probably right at the base of this trench right here. And they're going to pop up, Excel is going to pop up right here in their meter. And so there's my panel. And then I'll have Keith come over here real quick. The code also talks about in 210.52 as well, or excuse me, 250.52. I'm sorry. I know you guys like to correct me on this video. But 250.52, it talks about the ground rods right here. So we can actually lie these horizontal and lay them in. They cannot be closer than 6 foot. Um, they can be further. And then this is going to be a 5 8 inch ground rod pre-treated, which is this copper coating. So it won't uh, rust through acidicness. You can't use a piece of EMT, of course. And then you have to use a direct burial clamp. And then it's a continuous wire of number six coming through here, bonding to my second ground rod, which now the 2011 and 14 code state you have to have two ground rods. And then this also comes up the conduit because it says that anything coming out of the ground, that number six should be protected. Now, anything that's uh, Exposed to physical damage should be protected if it's number six or smaller, but here's the thing the code talks about it in there That you might as well protect this ground wire coming out of that ground just because I've already buried the rod If I had driven the rods at a 45 degree angle or straight up 90 and you could see the acorns at the top You wouldn't have to do this, but I did just for backfill reasons And so we just went ahead and strapped this up real tight and put some spacers in here We'll cut that off. That's just so in the bottom of my panel my two inch actually hits the center and I hit my half inch hub about, you know, two inches over. And um, this again will be in the stem wall. This is outside of the stem wall. Now, what Keith was telling me is that we want to be four inches over. So when that footer comes up and we want that stem wall to come right here. So as they're pouring, they can tie this off and put a stake and get it out of the way. And when they're done, they can release that. And it'll be right, hopefully close to that wall. If it's not, I can always put a piece of thin strut in here and put a strut strap. Now I've already implemented my slip sleeve. This is right here, slip sleeve conduit. Okay, so I have that implemented. It has schedule 80 coming out of the ground because article 300.5 says anything coming up protruding out of the ground with high voltage has to be um, a schedule 80. And below ground is schedule uh, 40. This elbow is a sweeping elbow, so it's larger than most, but that'll just make it easier for Bruce later to pull in some feeders. Okay, especially if we're gonna go compact aluminum, that would make it a lot more easier to pull in. So um, anyways, that's kind of it. Um, hopefully that video will help you out. So anytime you guys are looking for an electrician and he's saying, hey, make sure you get the UFER in and get your ground rods in while the trench is open.
this is kind of an implement of what he's talking about. So I don't get to do these jobs every day. It's kind of nice that I get a bigger house like this that we're going to put in. Uh, and we're going to step you through this whole process over the next couple of months. All of the branch circuits, um, dimmers, and all the things that we talked about. We're not sure if they're going to do any lighting uh, controls and whatnot through their phone apps that we do for, through Lutron. But um, anyways, any step of the way, we're going to try to show you guys what we're doing from ground up. Uh, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week.